Today we're going to be talking about The Summer I Turned Pretty Season 2 Part 2. If you guys want to watch my first video on Part 1, which I think is the first three episodes of the series, you guys can go check that out. There'll be a link right here or a link in the description or at the end of the video. I'm not going to recap the first three episodes because I've already done a video on it. I'm going to jump right into the beginning of episode four. Conrad is having a panic attack. We start off these episodes with Aunt Julia wanting to buy that mother freaking house. There's something about this beach house, which like honestly same, like if I had the opportunity to sell a very nice beach house and steal some money from my relatives that did not like me, I would do the same thing. So like, is Aunt Julia kind of valid? Maybe. But did Aunt Julia exist in the books? No, she didn't. In the book, it's the dad trying to sell the house, which they also make it a point where he is there. Later on becomes the initial role that he had within the book, where it's like he's the deciding factor. And for them to not only add two more characters to take on that role, also make the ending decision his final say is ridiculous because you did a whole bunch of looping for no reason. We could have just stuck with him doing it because I will get into Sky and Aunt Julia. They do not add anything to this story. Basically, everyone hates Julia and Sky. I find myself questioning throughout every single episode that they're in. Why are you there? Why do I have to know more about you? You're boring me. And it's not even that their stories are that boring. It's just that I know they will not add anything later on. Like once we get to season three, they are going to be nothing but maybe a cameo like Cam was in this season. I want to briefly talk about Sky's character because they become very irrelevant later on. I think their addition was a very big setup. Immediately horrible vibes. They were like, they did not write this character to be fun at all. My mom's not evil, Conrad. And your mama's insane. What bothers me about this is not even that like Sky's being a little bit nasty. Like I get it. Like sometimes they're gonna be mean. What bothers me about this is that like there is nothing later revealed about Susanna. Both Julia and Sky have this agenda that they're like Susanna is fucking a. She's a fucking bitch. The later reveal of what Susanna had done to Julia was nothing. I thought it was going to be the most dramatic thing, but the way that they frame it throughout the show is that like the Susanna had deep, dark secrets that she took to the grave and there was just nothing. It was the same thing that we've always known Susanna to be, which is someone who ignores the dark realities of the world. Is that good? No, I don't think that's good at all. But even to her last conversations that she has with people she's ignoring the reality that she is dying she does not want to talk about it she doesn't even want to talk to her own kids about it she ignores it and for that to be the reason why julia is like fuck you in your beach house i'm not giving it to your fucking fuck ass kids do whatever you want but they built it up like Susanna had some like deep dark backstory. Like she was fucking Oliver from Saltburn or something. Like she had some deep dark secrets. Like she was planning someone's fall, their demise. So moving on from Julian Sky, let's get into a little bit more of what we always want to talk about. We always want to talk about Jeremiah, Conrad, and Belly. The first scene that I'll talk about that includes our main trio, our love triangle, is the boardwalk scene. Not only the boardwalk scene initially, but the boardwalk flashback. So the boardwalk scene, we have them very much having like a little bit of a, like a dick measuring contest with Belly. Like Jeremiah rides the roller coaster with her. Like Conrad tries to have a moment with her about like Junior Mint, the little polar bear that he won her. And then we finally have a flashback to when he won her Junior Mint. The worst part is he was trying to be nice. He didn't know my heart was breaking. And my my golly, my G oh my, I was so disappointed in this scene. I remember this scene being so vital to me when I read the books. Um, and it was one of the scenes that I referenced back a lot whenever I was like wanting to like get a little glimpse of the summer I turned pretty. It was always one that really like, ooh, you know when you read a book and you have that little like tinge in your heart when you're like, you they look at another girl or you catch them with another girl. Like the like cheating scenes or the betrayal scenes where it's like, I want you here, get out of here. Go away. And like you get that little like tinge in your heart and your chest. And I'm like, 
Ow. This scene was always supposed to be that for me. And you got adults in braces. Ugh. Maybe this scene wasn't as important as I thought it was going to be. Like when I read the book, I thought that was such an important scene. And then when I watched this, I was like, oh, this like really doesn't matter. So now let's talk about Jeremiah and Belly. What? What you? How do I feel about them? In short, I've I've always disliked them. It really doesn't come down to this big moral which guy is better i've just never liked their scenes together i've never liked their chemistry even reading the books it just hasn't been something i really like i know this video and all my videos that when i'm like i ride for conrad i get a lot of comments that are like how could you like him like he's so bad and i have clung on to my high school mentality of when i read this where it was just like i know he's probably not like honestly neither of them are really a great choice but i really clung on to this idea that they were just meant for each other that like i don't really have any backing for why i think conrad's better there's actually not very many reasons i actually like fairly disliked him this season um will it change i don't know did I really like anyone this season? No, I was just, the whole time I was writing down complaints because I really, in all, didn't really like this season. So I was very surprised that so many people were talking about it like when it came out because I was so disappointed. This episode, we have some Jeremiah uh, narration. One thing that I did like was this. Now I didn't like it because I don't really like Jeremiah. What I did like about it was I liked the internal narration through the characters. I didn't think it was possible for things to get worse. I was wrong. I wish they did more of that throughout this season. I think that when you are dealing with the books, especially in first person, you miss a lot of that internal dialogue and that added layer of storytelling when you remove that, when you're doing a show or a movie. I think they should just drive that so much more in the third season. I think more Belly narration, I think more Jeremiah narration, I think more Conrad narration. I think it really does add in ways that I don't think they're really going to get through the scenes together. I don't think that the actors have enough. I don't think they can do any more explanation to each other. I want them to tell the audience. I think it's just gonna like pay off better at the end. And you know, you have the narration already written for you. It's already there. We finally get a scene with Jeremiah and Conrad where Jeremiah is paying the bills and Conrad is asking for Jeremiah's basically like blessing to date Belly. And it's a very odd scene because like he was already going to do it. Like the thing is, is that like Conrad's already dating Belly. Like he's already doing it. And now he's backtracking being like, I need your approval. I need you like by my side. Da, da, da. And he says in this, like it, my chest hurts physically not being able to tell her that I love her. Like my chest physically hurts to not be able to tell her that I'm in love with her. And he says this within the scene and it's something serious. Like it is like that so serious. Like it freaking hurts not being able to tell her that I love her. Love it, right? Like I love it when Conrad like shows that he has emotions. It's very, it's very good. Um, what I don't love is that when he gets opportunities to do it, he does it at some point we have to realize that jeremiah's blessing is not the say the end all say all like you have to tell belly how you feel or else guess who she's going to next the other brother that also likes her like where are we? like did he think that she was just like not gonna do that like belly wants a man and she's gonna get it it's gonna be from that family bloodline trust if you guys both don't get it together like your dad is next she's gonna get someone from that bloodline she does not want anyone else other than someone with the last name fisher you have got to think quicker he's like it freaking hurts it hurts and then like when she's like asking him to flat out say it he's like i can't he's like i you know what i can't do that the house is sold in two days someone buys it without even taking a tour of it the group decides to throw a big party for the house's big send-off and i had a theory earlier on in when i was watching the show i had a theory that susanna made her sister promise to sell the house so that they would have to make an effort to see each other or something um and i thought that like susanna and julia had like uh, a talk before they passed like on the phone and like julia was kind of like white thing them like 
get out of this house but really it was like their mom who was like i don't want them to like only be tied to this house but like that theory ended up just like not happening at all now a quick interruption from today's sponsor burka recently i had to get a new phone because not only was my screen cracked but my wide angle lens didn't work <gasps> and my standard lens did not work so only my zoomed in lens worked so i have to get a new phone and what does getting a new phone mean? That means getting new cases. Berga makes amazing, cute, high quality phone cases that I am obsessed with. Finding a phone case that matched my personal style but also protected my phone was a tough journey for me, but Berga made it so I didn't have to choose between one or the other with a very cute style, a hard exterior, a double layer protection, and also raised bezel, not only around your camera so your camera doesn't break, but also around your screen so your screen has an extra layer of protection. On their website, they have more than 200 designs that you can choose from, unique designs that match all different types of aesthetics and styles, and with unfading designs, your case will look just as good as new after continuous use. To match with me or find a case that matches your personal style, be one of the first 50 people to use my discount code. You guys can go to burger.com slash discount slash trend X15 to get 50% off your order. Burger also has a sale right now. So you guys can buy four cases, get two free and use your 50% off on top of that. Talk about major steel. Each design is created in-house by designers who have a long-standing experience in the fashion industry and trend forecasting. So you can always make sure that you're keeping up with the times and having a phone case that matches. And Burger has a 12 month warranty on their cases. So this means that if your phone case breaks, you are covered and you can get a new one. So make sure you guys are one of the first 50 people to use my discount code by going to burger.com slash discount slash trend X15 to pick up a case and get 15% off. So pick up your phone, type in that URL or I'll make it easy for you. It'll be at the top of the description and pick up your first burger case today. Thank you, Berga, for sponsoring today's video. This whole scene of like Jeremiah, Conrad, and Belly like searching for party decorations and booze and all that, I kind of really liked it. I finally liked it that they were kind of separated from everyone else because that's the part I love, right? I like the angst between the, the triangle, right? And I also kind of liked it that they were kind of like having like a little dick measuring contest and being like, who, like I want to sip with the Slurpee. <laughs> like, I'm so stupid. Like, why do I like that? But like, I liked it when like Conrad like, like drank it from her cup. Cause he was like, where's mine? <laughs> In reality, like he didn't do anything to her, but she's probably being like, I'm not going to flirt with you. I'm not going to read into what you say anymore, Con Connie. I'm not. But also the last thing that happened between them, I guess, was like her saying like, go to hell at his mother's funeral so and since that was the last interaction they had before all this happened at belly apologizes for what she said at the funeral conrad is like saying like i love you so much bookie baby pie princess like with his eyes like he's like i love you like basically with his eyes he says that so like later on when he's like i thought you knew it's like conrad i knew if you want anyone to know that you loved belly like i knew like he was literally like i love you so much bookie baby i don't care if you told me to go to hell at my mother's funeral I'm not even mad about that. Like he loves her. He loves her because he didn't like flame her for that the second he saw her. Like if someone said that to me at my mother's funeral, no matter, even if I love them, I'd be like, you're a fucking bitch for that. Like, why the fuck did you say that to me? This is a hundred percent your look, Connie baby. Belly has roller skates on and she rolls up into the party and she, <laughs> she falls, she slips, which is like everything. There's nothing more than I love than like a main girl of a romantic movie falling, being clumsy. It's my favorite. And she falls. Oh, oh shit. And Jeremiah says, like with like a little like cheeky smirk, he's like, you don't need to hurt yourself to get my attention. You don't need to hurt yourself to get my attention. What the fuck? What the fuck? I would never, out of all the things, out of all the things, they could have put him there to say they chose that. You don't have to hurt yourself to get my attention. I would have done anything else than to put that there. I get it. It, it, it was supposed to be cheeky. I think there's so many things, other things that we could have put there. I don't know what they would be. <laughs> 
I can't rattle anything off of the top of my head right now. But I think if he said anything in that scene, like I would have been like, Ugh. like you're fucking like you're cheesy, you're cornball, like you're cornball right there. Like you're acting like a fucking cornball. Because it's him. Circling back to Steven and Taylor's B storyline, the like confession scene at the party was something that I was not expecting to like so much. Like Steven saying like this, whatever we're doing here, whoever caught feelings first loses, like you win. Like I lose, I like you. First question to admit they, they caught feelings loses, right? So I lose, you win. Okay, drama queen. I mean, I mean, I liked it. I liked it. It was, it's the best, it's, it's best friend's brother is the one for me. It's best friend's brother is the one for me. And they're executing it better than the main love triangle is executing scenes. Now, don't get me wrong. Like there's some stuff that Steven says where he's just so fucking annoying. Like he, he is annoying. Like I'm not even going to lie about that one, but they're like their scenes together, I really liked their arc over the season. If I didn't already have like a bitter taste in my mouth for like the way they just exiled his first initial love interest within the show, very odd to me. But that, I was like kind of into it. And he's like, her name, her middle name is fucking Madison. It's Madison. Her middle name is Madison. Belly goes out to the water and it looks like she's going to like fall in. And Conrad goes to her and he like picks her up and she's like, put me down, Conrad. And they get into this like whole thing about, you know, they're, they're, this is like a very big scene. And he goes, I thought you knew. I would have been there for you through everything. I, I thought you been. knew, I thought you knew. <laughs> Insinuating that she knew about his feelings for her. And then she says, I thought we loved each other. I thought that we loved each other. And he says, we did. We did. This scene is a very like crucial part of the story. This is like a pivotal moment between them, right? And Jenny Han has commented on this scene saying that she does not like it that he said we did. She wish he said we do. I also agree with that. I think it kind of really does misconstrued Conrad's character that like he is so unwilling to so show that he likes Belly, which in this scene, like, it really, like, Conrad throughout it has always been the type to very much showcase a, more of his true feelings in intimate settings. And I feel like in this, he would, him pleading with her that, like, I thought you knew how I felt. I thought you knew that I was just going through a hard time. I thought you knew, which is also a lot to ask of her that, like, I just assumed, you know, since I was going through a hard time with my mom that I had left you on prom due to that. Not that I stopped having feelings for you or that I didn't like you. I think but Conrad would have said we do. And the author says it. So no, you can't argue with me. You actually can't. I actually have evidence. I have Jenny Hans right behind my back saying that like, no, he would say we do. So you can't say anything to me. And I think they messed up on this scene. I think they really do mess up with Conrad's character in the sense that they keep showcasing that like he expects Belly to be like a mind reader in every case scenario that he like doesn't have to communicate at all that like obviously he likes her like every single scene he's like obviously I liked you like duh and he doesn't go to confess his feelings to Belly until like Steven is like no like you totally should it's like, be a fucking man. Like, be a fucking man and tell this girl how you feel. Like, you already know, like, you, like, he basically has, like, a 100% shot. He has a 100%, like, win guarantee. Like, if he just was like, Belly, I love you. You got it in the bag, dude. You got it in the bag. Like, she has been pining after you for years. And you know this. Like, you know this. Regardless if you thought she knew, wouldn't it be something that you would want to tell her? Belly's running away, crying as she always does. Still love her though. Um, blowout, done. Vodka, drank. Tears, streaming. She's running through this big, big house, to a full on mess. I was dying at how they did not tell Laura about this, like this whole time. Like I was dying. I was dying. Why was it such a secret that they went there? Like they, it was summer. Like they didn't even have to go to school. Like, 
Conrad was the only one doing like classes in the summer. Like why? And then we get the opening shot of like episode seven and the opening scene, which is Laura and Belly fighting. And like, they're getting into it. I'm talking like, now it's not just about this one time. Like I, as your daughter, think you actually hate me. It goes back into everything at the funeral. Like really the person that was most upset about it was Laurel. Like Conrad seems to be like, not, he was like, low key, he's like, kind of seems like he's like, happens queen, like it happens, like to the best of us. But Laurel seems to be the one that has like the most amount of like hatred to Belly for this. Laurel like is low key like telling Belly what she needs to hear, which is kind of like, get your act together. Like you're, you're not the only one grieving. Like you need to get your shit together. Like we're all trying to get through this. I agree with her mom at some points and then I disagree at other points. I feel like Laurel was really hard on Belly for a lot of this when a lot of it was Laurel's lack of being there for her children during this time. They both needed this wake up call of like, hey, you were never there and hey, you're kind of like doing too much with this. Like you're kind of acting out and being a little bit of a brat. And I agree on both sides, but then like Laurel smacks her and then it's like any talking point that you said that was valid is like <laughs> low-key a race when you slap her. Laurel and Belly reconcile their relationship. It's very like Ladybird, like very like healing. They're asking each other if they could forgive each other. And that was like kind of really sad and like almost kind of made me cry. Cause she was like, can you forgive me? And then she was like, can you forgive me? And they like have a really tender moment. And it was like, it was pretty good. I'll be honest, I'm not gonna lie. Why would I lie about that? You forgive me? Yes. <laughs> Do you forgive me? I think they ask Laurel to talk to Julia or Laurel offers. This scene is so stupid. It really does bother me because the whole discourse of the entire fucking show boils down to like nothing. It just, it revolves to like bitterness. And it's like, just give these kids this stupid house. And then after this scene, they really don't talk about much. They honestly, like if you watch the scene between Laurel and Julia, they don't talk about much. It's just like, Susanna didn't want to like face the realities of her like death. Laurel says this, that she, Susanna was also like that with her. And then she's like, okay, like I won't sell that house. Okay. And then it comes in that we have to go through the dad again. Now the dad has to come to the house and be like, well, I'm not buying this house. I'm not doing it. No. And it's the same story, like, Susanna would have wanted them to have it. It's like, if Susanna wanted them to have it, she should have fucking done this herself. She wrote letters to every single one of those people. Every single one of those people. She couldn't have told them to, to get, oh, maybe I should sign the house over to the boys. We, at some point, we need to start blaming Susanna. At some point, we need to start actually holding Susanna accountable for her actions because, but anyways, I was also mad about this dad because like the dad could have been the main antagonist to the entire show. And like the dad also has so many other layers with like, like I said earlier in the book, he's the reason why it stings so much is because the realtor that is helping him sell the house is also the realtor that he cheated on their mother with. Like, it is so much better. I don't know why they chose to cut that out and choose to do Aunt Julia's, like, very half-assed story. Anyway, skipping forward from the house. So the house debacle is over. The next triumph that everyone has to get through is Conrad's finals. He has, like, a final that he can't miss or also, like, flunk out of school, basically. I wish that was more prevalent in my mind throughout the show that, like, he had a more pressing manner. He did say that earlier. He said, fuck school, fuck school. And then we have the entire scene of uh, Jeremiah and Belly. And it's kind of like a confession scene on Belly's end where she's saying like, I like, why won't you give me a second chance? Like, why do you hate me? Like you, it almost was like a scene where she was like, if you don't give me a second chance, you want me to die on the side of the street. And he's like, bitch, when I gave you the first chance, you went and kissed my brother. Um, like if it was me, you wouldn't be getting a second chance. Uh, we wouldn't even be hanging out right now if it was me. I also don't have a theory, but my perception of the summer I turned pretty is that like Belly is to Jeremiah what Conrad is to Belly. Like Belly's never fully there for Jeremiah in the same way that like Conrad is never fully there for Belly. And it's like a continuous cycle that's like really hard to watch. They kiss in this confession scene. 
oh my god they kiss like it's the last breath of air they'll have on on this planet earth he puts his like thumb around her throat and i i jumped like i i just paused for a moment because it was like i thought this was a classy party i think he's like trying to be hot or are they trying to make like jeremiah hot and i don't understand it like like it fem it felt very like vampire diaries and i was like this is i thought this was a classy party like i thought this was the summer i turned pretty not the summer i turned like hormonal and then of course as they're kissing outside I and i say of course like they weren't kissing outside of his car in the same spot they dropped Conrad off. Conrad comes up and he's like, oh. And it, now the tables have returned. The tables are reversed. As much of a de belly defender I am, I really was like, belly, can you handle not having a crush for one day? You can go one day without pining after someone. It's okay. Like, we don't have to be making confessions to people every single summer. Like, you can go one day, one measly little day, without confessing to one of these brothers. Like, like three days of him being nice to you after, like, he was mean to you for the entire year. Come on, guys. My, I need to emphasize that this whole interaction like let's say like monday is when they went to conrad's school and then went to the beach house we're on like friday like we're not like at on monday he was like i fucking hate like i'm the number one belly hater like i fucking hate this bitch he was so mean to her he was like oh you got me coffee dumped oh you fucking you want to help fuck you you're gonna change that tire fuck you like he hated that girl he hated her and this is like friday and now he's like um i like you as much as that's like on him as well i'm also like belly like stand up and then conrad's like i'm gonna make the decision he's like go be with chair he's the one who wants you i don't that was very like vampire diaries might i add like and like, I knew once Conrad said that like he didn't want her, she was like, but I kind of want you again now. Like I kind of want you now that you said you didn't want me. Jeremiah says to Belly that he needs her to have a conversation with Conrad before he can commit to her, which is finally like the first like common sense that anyone has. He's like, don't play me twice. Fool me once, shame on me, fool me twice stop and belly's only response to this it wasn't her only response but like the thing that she said that stuck out to me the most was that conrad doesn't feel that way for me not true trust me conrad has made that very clear i don't care about what con it doesn't matter what conrad thinks or feels this is about you it only matters if you like him or not belly like are this is that's the whole name of the game what does belly want and you're saying that the only reason why you're not with him is because he doesn't want you? Ugh, Jeremiah. Now I'm like, Jeremiah, stand up. And then they had the motel scene where I actually love this shot. Um, As corny as it is, like, I, I love it because it's, that's what it's for. It's like teenage angst. I love that. She's in the middle of the bed. Belly wakes up and like, Jeremiah's not in the room. And then she's like, oh my God, where are the where is he? And then he comes back and he was like, I was just getting some brekkie. And then she's like, uh, like, you're my man's, my man's, my man's. I really like you. Da, 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 da. They kiss again. And he wraps his thumb around her throat again. I, I really don't know why he keeps doing that. I think he was like, this is going to be a moment that people are going to clip. Like, I think he like was like trying to like show some appeal to like the, like, the audience or something or like i don't know what he was trying to do it turned from something romantic to something like not romantic anymore to me and that's just my perspective i'm sure a lot of people really did like that but for me i was just like oh you have this like big moment where like jeremiah and like belly kiss again it's mind you it's not even their first kiss like it's we saw them kiss two seconds ago and it's like in the dark night oh and then it like cuts to like conrad in the, like the room and he's like i'm gonna take the bus home and it's like 
I think I've seen this film before. Like, you're fucking insane. What is wrong with you? Friends. Granted, use the songs you want to use. If you want to use recognizable songs, that's fine. But at least make it somewhat like a better transition. Jesus Christ. It was like jarring. It was jarring to hear Exile like that. It was like... I was like, oh my god. And one of the last things that Belly says about Conrad is... I release you, Conrad Fisher. I evict you from my heart. So I release you, Conrad Fisher. I evict you from my heart. And as much as me looking at that now, I am like, oh my God. <laughs> if this was like a few years ago, I would have been like, oh my God. Like, you're joking. I would have been like, Belly, no. I would have been like, oh my God, Belly. Like, you're joking. Like, no. Like, I would have ate that up when I was like in middle school or high school. Like, I'm not denying it. And like, <laughs> I'm not that much older than the target demographic for the show. But like, I recognize that some of the lines that I think are like corny are like very much like, oh, to like, someone who's a little bit younger. And I love that because like, granted, like I'm not, the target demographic is a little bit younger than what I am right now. Like I'm 21 years old. I love dogging on stuff, but like I, I can, I can understand when a line isn't written for me. I get it. I get it. Um, and honestly, now that I'm reading it back, I'm kind of like, Maybe she did kind of eat. Maybe I'm like, like I, maybe I didn't understand it on the first time or second time, but maybe I'll get it on the third. Like, like maybe I'm, I'm, maybe I'll get it. Maybe I'll get it. And that's the final episode. The episode ends with, um, like Steven and Taylor having like a little moment. And then they end it with like a volleyball scene where like Jeremiah watches Belly at her like volleyball camp. I don't know. It was whatever. I wish it ended at the motel, but that's just me. I didn't like this season at all. Um, I'm not going to pretend that I liked it. I think it was really all over the place with a lot of unnecessary additional characters. Susanna's death caused rifts, right? It causes waves through it, ripples throughout the other characters. And in a better storytelling way, I would have liked if they elaborated on those ripples that she created rather than adding someone else in to create more discourse when we already have enough within Susanna and the dad to create enough ripples that we've already like set up within the first season. Like he came, we found out he cheated. It's all very good. And it sets itself up perfectly for the second season. And then you completely negate that to add two more characters that don't have as lasting of an impact as the dad would have. I feel like the Samurai Turn Pretty books have a very big pull on not only the love triangle and it is very angsty and it's very teenage angst but they also have a very big um central focal point of grief i think that straying away from that is one of the you know least beneficial things that they could do for the story because granted i know it's not some like you know award-winning masterpiece about grief but like for a lot of people and for me this story about these boys losing their mother was one of you know not the first, but, you know, one of the more lasting stories that I remember reading about, you know, kids losing their mother, like teenagers that are around my age losing their parents. I think that that is an important part that they are almost floating away from throughout this season. Like, it seemed like it really was important, but also wasn't. Let me know what you guys thought. I know you guys will have very differing opinions than I do, especially everyone who loves Jeremiah. I would love to hear all of your comments, especially because this has been a long overdue video and I'm really excited to share my thoughts finally on The Summer I Turned Pretty season two. And I can't wait to talk with you guys in the comments and have all you guys yell at me for being a really a big hater of jeremiah with little to no reason and that wraps it up for today guys i hope you enjoyed and i will see you in my next video bye